All right. Uh, day 17, this is it. In case you missed the show and um, haven't watched it yet, I wanted to show you the important parts. Uh, and I want to remind you, Izzy's uh, got contact information for Trent, Lily, and Sal. Uh, so you can get together and, and build. Um, and I might record a video to show you how to host. I mean, it's really easy, but if you don't know how, um, we'll have to we'll have to make sure you know. Because remember, each team has to have one world where your Rube Goldberg machine is going to be. And you want all four of you to work on it because you'll get four times as much work done. And then Deacon, Evelyn, Rosie, and Jackson, you'll have the other one. And Deacon, you should really try Education Edition because accounts have been fixed. We need you on there. And worst case scenario, call our tech support with your computer logged in and in front of you, and he can talk you through it and help you. But let's watch uh, what you need to compete, to, to win some prizes. This is what you got to do. Alrighty. We've put together a little bit of a slide deck and what we're going to do, and I know some of you are dying to find out what the announcement is and find out what the overall challenge is. So, for example, if you look at the video Steve just shared uh, that his students have played uh, a while um, each event sort of triggered the next event, which led to sort of a big reveal at the end. Place at the end. Um, so that's what's going so if you haven't seen this recording, look, I'm, I'm 37 minutes into it. You want to watch uh, that example from Mr. Isaacs and, and kids who built one in his class. Coming, right? How you get there, what insanity you create to get there is up to you. Uh, but we want to talk about what our look fors are going to be, and then we will reveal it. So let's talk about what goes into uh, a good design of a Rube Goldberg machine. And we'll try to lead that conversation, of course, towards Minecraft. So the big build. Let's let's do this. So right. what are our look fors, right? When we are judging these, when you're giving these or submitting your entries, what should you take into account before submitting, uh, so that you uh, make sure you covered all of your bases well and you know that you're going to score high. Right. Well, and also in the design. So before you even get to the submission. Right? That's right. So Kathy, why don't you take this one? Well, we can oh, alternate. Sure. So we are looking. We're what's our impression are going to be like are we thinking oh my goodness what a machine right i mean you heard some of our reactions with uh the levers uh the lever videos I've been before. like oh my goodness you know so is it interesting right from the start do you catch some you know do you are you going to catch the viewer's eyes and like what is the wow factor um in your build so exactly. that of course is the first thing that we're looking at Right, it's 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 gotta it's gotta have that hook to it, right? All right, let's move on. So this is something I was talking about as we watched one of those le uh, lever videos, the one specifically with the piano in the room that looked like it was a family celebrating, you know, the holidays, uh, and everything was well decorated. It was very clear to see what picture was being painted, uh, and a good Rube Goldberg machine, or at least a very clever Rube Goldberg machine, uh, has a theme. It's sort of uh, matches what the task at hand is, right? So in that case, the lever was being showcased, but the build had an overall theme. So how do you style it, right? Does it have an overall look? Does the build use costumes or sounds or props that sort of match that theme? Uh, does the theme itself match the task, right? If we're talking piano keys, did, did that build, uh, even though it was just for levers and not a Rube Goldberg machine as a whole, uh, did it match that? And in this case, it did. Um, it should be ab obvious from the moment we approach the build, right? If we look at a, a, the, the big overview of your video and your build, we should say, oh, we, we see how they kind of themed this one out, right? So you want to consider what your theme is going to be. And of course, to do that, you have to know what that end game is going to be. And we have it is a tiny little hint, I guess. So really important. As a team, you got to come up with your theme before you start building. Uh, otherwise, it won't make any sense, and then you'll have to take things down and put them back together. Anchoring it in real-world objects, even though yes. it's a platform, it, it is helpful. Love it. Absolutely. Right? Because a real Rube Goldberg machine, if we were doing a physical build, right, would, would be using, like, kitchen supplies and things like that. So, yeah. Everyday objects, just found objects, not just 
a series of domino runs or marble runs. Uh, they, they should use things that are just laying around your house. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. Yes. And that's if I mean, if you can theme that out and make it look that way uh, in Minecraft, you've got a leg up presentation. And I think this one is kind of one that speaks for itself, except to know that when you submit your video, and look, we've gotten a lot of videos for those first six mini challenges. And some of you have done an incredible job of theming your presentation, doing voiceover work or adding music that goes with it or whatever it may be, telling sort of a story uh, of your build or what. Now, for this part, you can uh, do that when you record the Flipgrid. Just know how you're going to present it, and, and they'll tell you more about how to present it later. Because it should be a story, not just, here's a lever, here's uh, an inclined plane, uh, here's a, a, a pulley. No, that's going to bore them to death. You want to make it a story. What's happening, right? Not just telling them play, play what's happening, but kind of giving us a narrative. Um, right, and it says that's what I just said. Not a step by step explanation of how the triggers work, but rather a like maybe the story of if the minecart is taking like a passenger through the machine or something like that, like we just kind of saw, you know, that that build that Steve showed uh gave us a journey, right? It was very clear that that person was kind of on a journey through the build. It told a story, even though that no one actually narrated that one, it still told a story. Uh, but show your personality, your humor, uh, engaging narrative. Uh, does the video verbal presentation create excitement, right? You want you want to get us pumped about it, right? Those are the ones we keep throwing on the screen each uh, time we go live. Get us pumped about it and do that through the presentation. Um, it doesn't have to be some, some well-produced video. It's all about what you do with it. So uh, that is presentation. And that brings up an, the, the next few points, actually. So Kathy, back to you. All right. So, um, you know, we know that you don't have, uh, as Jennifer said earlier, you don't necessarily have everyday objects in um, Minecraft, but you have tons of different items. So, you know, are you using these items creatively? So we have an example here where, OK, this is a tripwire. And sometimes um, in builds, people use tripwires as faucets. So um, in your build, we're looking at how you use your blocks and inventory items in unique and creative ways, right? So are you using them beyond what they're intended to do? Are you using them to stylize the build, right? So I mean, in real life, you would not use wool as your building material necessarily because um, well, for reasons that are obvious or n maybe not, but you in Minecraft, you might. And um, I want to like, there's an example the other day, um, Becky used wool. Oh, no, Becky used concrete powder to make cherry blossom trees. Like when that is a very creative use of an item. I love that so much. I can't stop thinking about that one. And, and the barrier blocks to keep the concrete powder from not falling down yes. to the ground. Yeah. I was doing, I was trying that all night. I was like, ooh, barrier block. <laughs> so I don't know if you've been looking in the chat, but we finally figured it out. The rules are you have to use Minecraft Education Edition. Has to be built in that. No mods, no outside third-party software, but inside Minecraft Education Edition, you can use Code Builder. So if you did the uh, Tale of Two Villages, Hour of Code activity, you know how to use Code Code Builder. You should do that so you can learn how. You can use Command Blocks. You can use Redstone. You can use anything in Minecraft Education Edition, just nothing outside. And no World Edit or things like that, because we can't use Java. So, yes, it was beautiful. So not only was it creative, it was also gorgeous. So, um, so yes, how, do, how are you using items creatively? And then I guess, are we going to the next? Yes, so we I are. Do you have anything to add to this one, Eric? No, no, I think you did a good job. And, okay. and I feel like this next one, uh, I, I'm happy that I get to share. I'm not going to lie, because I feel like this is like the core of what makes a Rube Goldberg machine a Rube Goldberg machine. Uh, and that is your chain reactions, right? So far, we've done six mini challenges, but they were sort of in uh, isolation, mm -hmm. right? Each each 
thing. In fact, the levers we looked at today or that sizzle reel we looked at um, showed us just what those one machine functions as in isolation. Now is the time to sort of link all of those cool, clever creations and ideas together so that each event triggers the next thing, right? Because that is what a Rube Goldberg machine does. It's a series of uh, contraptions that trigger the next event and the next event and the next event. Um, so you've got to come up with clever ways to make each thing trigger, trigger the next thing, right? And it doesn't all have to be through command block or even redstone. There are ways to make that happen just, you know, with the objects that are in the game. So for, uh, to give an example, maybe we do start with a mine cart, but maybe that mine cart delivers a zombie to a certain area. And when that zombie is delivered to that area, that zombie chases a villager and then that villager runs and steps on a button, uh, right? <laughs> that can all be well, done. Right. And then you have to keep the villager in its space because otherwise Otherwise, it'll run yeah. all over the place. The machine has to run, right? So if the zombie, you know, gets to the villager before he gets to the button, the machine's not going to continue. But those oh. are ways to do that. Barrier right? block. Yep, exactly. So how does each event lead to the next? Is there a variety of methods, right? Or are we just seeing the same one over and over and over again? Giving us a variety is going to make the machine uh, incredibly unique. Uh, so we want to see that variety in there. Uh, and do the triggers, I love this one, do the triggers cause suspense for the next step, right? And again, going back to lava, uh, right? It built suspense for wondering what that next step is going to be. So those, those chain reactions are, are vital. Uh, they are extremely important. And we will reveal, once we get to the big reveal, uh, how many of those chain reactions should be in a finished build, right? A minimum, at least, because, of course, you can use... Uh, uh, way more than the minimum. You can always use way more than the minimum. Oh, Kathy, you're so lucky. You get to do the next one. Oh, but I was going to say you can do it because it, it makes you... It does. It does. <laughs> it makes you laugh. So humor uh, is a, a huge part uh, of Rube Goldberg machines, as, as many of you know. If you've seen Rube Goldberg machines, they're wacky, they're weird. Uh, when we show that video at the very beginning and the very end of every stream, there's a lot of weird, funny stuff going on. Uh, and we've gotten some submissions. I, I, I'm just oh, going to yeah, add yeah. Um, for, for, you know, fun fact. Uh, so even though Rube was trained as an engineer, my guess is if he were living today, he'd be building in Minecraft too. Um, but he didn't really care if the machines worked or not. Uh, he just wanted to make you laugh. That's Rube Goldberg's granddaughter, by the way. And even though they were rooted in real engineering, et cetera, and as long as you had some cooperative animals, they would work. But his real main objective was to make you laugh. So this is an important piece uh, of the equation. All right, let's, uh, let's watch this. All right. Hello, I am the chef. Oh, it's gotta be louder. I am cutting the meat with my knife. This knife is a wedge, you see. It's very cool. And I am a chef. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but giggle at that one every single time I watch it. And it's for so many reasons that we talked about already, right? So it's clever. Uh, it's funny. Uh, like. To, to present a wedge, they didn't need to build a chef at all. He doesn't need, that character doesn't need to be there. But by putting that character there, we're theming it out. It's funny. It's interesting. It's eye-catching. And then, of course, the narration and voiceover by the student who submitted it makes it a, a million times funnier. The Rube Goldberg machine on Steve just showed that. The first time I saw that, I mean, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is so... So awesome. I see. I love this also. And then this, okay. So construction and artistry, right? Um, so we know you can build. Um, how are you going to make it look incredible, right? So um, that we've seen several examples of that in all the Rube Goldberg in the simple machine build leading up to that, up to this. And, um, you know, how is your machine? designed around your setting, right? So perfect example, let's go back to the room where they were celebrating, the family was celebrating the party and everything. So it's like, if your machine is set in this environment, you know, how are you gonna, what are you gonna build to match that, right? So um, our example on the slide is if you're in, the, <laughs> if your machine is set in a bathroom and why wouldn't it be a diner, a mountain, a Mars, how is everything around your machine going to match that?
Okay. Yes, we are ready. So next we have, do you want me to take this or do, would you like to take this? You sound excited. I, I, I mean, I want to, I want to feed the well, excitement. I don't know so. why, because this for me. <laughs> Keep going. Keep uh, right on going, Kathy. Teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? So um, it may be the hardest part about building a Rube Goldberg machine. And uh, I will say, yeah, that is challenging. How we want to know, you know, how well you and your teammates work together. So we can't see this during your build. <laughs> Uh, in your presentation. Um, and you know, while you're building, you know, you should always be respectful of each other. I mean, is there, if there's anybody who is kind of like feeling left out, how do you bring them back into um, the group? And like, how do you communicate? Well, I actually. And this is hard because you're working remotely. Um, but it's important because this is a team contest. So you want to let them know that everybody played a part and built something. And when you do the final flip grid, all four of you should be in there showing some part of it off, maybe standing by it. One person can do all the talking and telling the story, but everybody, they should go by and say, oh, and this is my teammate, uh, you know, Trent or my teammate Sal or my teammate Izzy, whoever uh, is introducing. That would be awesome. Creative and artistic design. This is this is the goal. The good news is for Nico, who says he no, they don't like sprinkles, they only like the icing. Uh, I promise you don't have to eat it. <laughs> so you see, this is how your Rube Goldberg machine has to end. Whatever you do, how many simple machines you use, the end has to be adding sprinkles on the top of a cake. That has to be. Uh, so whatever your theme is, include sprinkles putting sprinkles on a cake. So yeah, this is important. You got to have a minimum of four simple machines, a minimum of 10 transitions, meaning going from one simple machine to another, and it has to end by putting sprinkles on top of the cake. It could be as short as one minute, but I doubt that's going to win. If you've watched the videos of the people who did the mini challenges, you see what you're up against, right? Those are the ones you have to beat. Five minutes max, that levels the playing field. So even those people who do amazing hundreds of hours builds, they have to keep it to five minutes or less. So that's where you can compete. But the more uh, involved, more interesting, more storytelling you do with yours, the better chance you have of winning. Of one that you love uh, amongst others. They've got them, and if you go to the registration, and then here we have, um, yeah, it's got to be Minecraft Education Edition. The world must be new and original. It could be flat, infinite, or old, or any of the biome worlds. You'll see when you launch a new world or create a new world on Education Edition. You already know four minimum simple machines, uh, ten uh, steps or transitions minimum, no maximum on transfers of energy. All right, uh, the the verbal presentation length or theatrics of your video when you do the flip grid, it could be two minutes maximum and five minutes maximum on the whole video when you record to flip grid. And as you can see, no texture packs, no mods. Page and you click the little button that says right there on the website and in the rule book. And of course, email to you once you register, you get and there we go. Uh, good. So we got to make sure we have our teams finalized by March 3rd. So you can submit, like I said, way before Wednesday, March 10th. We don't want to wait till the last minute and be all worried because that doesn't make for a good video.